Welcome to another edition of Signal by Sony and an exclusive Xperia Z2 tablet teardown. Now before we open this baby up, let's take a quick look at the outside. The bottom edge features the headphone jack. You'll notice that it's not sealed, yet it's waterproof? What? Don't worry, we'll explain the technology when we look inside. Next to it is a magnetic charging port, first introduced with the Xperia Z1 phone, and of course, minor labeling such as the IMEI code. The top edge includes the SIM card holder, SD card holder, micro USB, remote control infrared sensor, and a microphone, all covered with waterproof covers and rubberized borders to keep the water from entering. The sides feature volume, power key, and speakers. The front panel houses a 10.1 inch 1920 by 1200 resolution screen with an anti-smudge coating overlaid on glass to reduce fingerprints. You can also see the 2.2 megapixel front camera and light sensor. The back side features an 8.1 megapixel rear camera. The back panel is mostly plastic with soft touch paint for best enabling antenna signals. Oh, and there's the NFC logo, which is the location for the NFC antenna. But let's be honest, what we really wanna see are the inside guts. So let's start opening it up. The first step is the removal of the top cover display held together with adhesive sealant. To do this without breaking the screen, Sony engineers designed a very simple but very special tool made from a bendable graphite material to gently separate the screen from the sealant. Now that the screen is removed, the FPC ribbon is disconnected to separate the display from the main housing. Next, the right speaker is removed out of its waterproofed, sealed compartment followed by the FPC ribbon that goes up to the main board for the right speaker, and lastly, the magnetic charging that lies across the battery between the charger and the ZIF connector. Unhinging the battery connectors completes the disconnection of the battery. The left speaker is now removed and onto the five-pole headset jack. After unconnecting the ZIF removing the rubber seal, we can see that the headphone jack is in a standalone waterproof housing. This ensures you can plug in your headphones if the tablet was wet without compromising the insides. After removing the NCF antenna, the sub antenna, and a few more screws, eight so far, we can now see the entire battery, which is a lithium polymer 6,000 milliamp hour battery. Now onto the motherboard. To reveal our favorite piece requires the disconnection of multiple components as this is a board-to-board -board circuitry structure. First are the smaller items such as the power key, side key, volume up and down controls, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS antenna, and headset jack. Next is disconnecting the front and rear cameras. Two screws hold the micro USB slot in for stability. Now onto disconnecting the FPC that holds the lights insert, the infrared ambient light display, and the microphone. It actually houses the hall sensor that is used to turn on and off a tablet if you're using the magnetic cover. Let's also unhinge the USB port. Almost to the motherboard now. One last screw is keeping the board seated and we're ready to pull it up. You can see it has shield cans. After removing the shield cans, we can take a closer look. We have the right speaker amplifier and next to that, a connector. We also have a section called no mount. This is used for the Japanese version with digital TV components. Next is the LED light and the cellular network component. The larger piece on the motherboard is the memory, which varies from 16 to 32 gigs. To the right of it is the Light Management Unit, or LMU. This controls the backlighting of the tablet's display. Here we have a power management component with heat conductor goo. Yep, that's a real term. Moving on to the processor and RAM, which both sit on what engineers call a POP, package on package. This enables the thin design, but also enables quicker access to the RAM memory via two layers of components. The top piece is the three gig of RAM, and on the bottom we have an 801 Snapdragon 2.3 gigahertz quad core processor. The motherboard is a one-sided mount. To remove the battery, the engineer needs to remove the sealant with an extract force of exactly one centimeter per second. And before we go, let's take a quick look at the second motherboard underneath the LCD screen. This operates the touch panel controls and the LCD itself. And there you have it, one badass engineer, a specially designed tool, and one heck of a lot of waterproofing to make this one of our favorite teardowns yet. Thanks for watching, and for more Sony, visit youtube.com/signal.